what do you like the most about your job? Sure, that's an interesting question. There's nothing really I like about my job, but there's absolutely a lot that I love about my career. Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Notando and I make videos on construction, lifestyle and travel. Uh, in today's video, we have a really random video. I have Sharon. Hi everybody. <laughs> so Sharon is a lawyer who specialized in maritime law, which is yes. shipping law. So basically it's the law of the sea which is really interesting i know that this channel is predominantly about construction but i do like um shining lights on careers that are not really like looked at or focused on i do want people to join the construction industry but i want you to also know that there's other things out there don't just be like narrow-minded and focus on just this career so i'm just gonna ask Sharon a few questions i know nobody asked <laughs> for this shares hey um, what do you have to study in order for you to be a maritime lawyer? Well, firstly, you'll just have to get your LLB um, so you can qualify as a lawyer. <laughs> then you have an opportunity to do your master's in maritime law. Or you could also do like a postgraduate diploma or something like that. It depends on which university you would be interested in pursuing, you know, uh, your further, oh, which university you'd be interested to further your studies with. However, it's not necessarily a requirement for you to do a qualification in maritime law or shipping law. You could just move from LLB and join a firm, a law firm that basically specializes or has a department that specializes in shipping law do your articles there and hopefully be retained in the department so there isn't a law that's set in stone to say this is basically how you're going to make it in this industry but it's very important to have an llb degree okay oh the wind so like an llb degree is like the foundation and there's no like llb in maritime law type of thing you start spe specializing when you're working so it's kind of like let's say with me qs thing like mm -hmm. i'm a qs Mm -hmm. after my degree or whatever mm -hmm. and then i work for an electrical company now that's just going to focus on electrical work mm -hmm. or i work for a painting company that's mm -hmm. just going to focusing on paint yeah. so maritime is like a yeah. like a trade that you can focus on oh okay cool yeah. so what made you um go into maritime because it's so unique like i feel like a lot of people in south africa go into criminal law is it family law as well uh and yeah i think civil law civil law yeah then. predominantly because then that covers almost everything that's not criminal right oh, okay. there could also be contracts so on and so forth but really for me what got me into the industry um i've always been passionate about furthering my studies so i reached out to my then mentor mm. who was a professor at this university when i was doing my final year and i shared her i shared with her my aspirations like listen i want to pursue my studies i want to do a master's but I wanted to do my master's in like human rights law because you know you like you know social justice and so on and so forth and she literally looked at me in the eyes and she said sharon we have a lot of human rights lawyers okay. like we don't need another one <laughs> then she advised that i should just basically look into maritime law and mining law then choose for myself which of the two i'm most interested in and i would be comfortable pursuing so i did my research i started doing my research on maritime law and then as i was doing that research i came across such an interesting concept which is to arrest the ship so i was like oh okay so you can arrest the ship so in my mind the only arresting i know obviously is from the context of criminal law like mm -hmm. we're gonna cuff you and i'm gonna take you to jail now i'm thinking how do you arrest a vessel you know mm. so reading through the you know the, the the information that i got there i was like no this is quite interesting you know so i read further and further then i reached out to a professor at uct and i expressed my intentions of doing my master's in maritime law and yeah i think that's where it started you know so if i were to narrow it down i would say the concept of arresting a ship actually grasped my attention oh. into this industry <laughs> yeah okay so from a high school perspective if somebody is in high school and they want to study or specialize in maritime law what are the requirements subject wise none there's no <laughs> so you can do whatever when you're in matric and then um do you remember what your um, 
what is the thing APS has yes. to be um, so well that was a long time ago and requirements have changed now they are significantly higher than what they were before mm. so I think my APS was around 36 or so excluding LO in high school what you need to focus on is getting into university. Mm. So you need to focus on meeting the requirements of doing your LLB, right? That's the first and foremost thing. So you, you at this point, point at this stage you, you shouldn't be worried about the requirements of being a maritime lawyer per se but you should be worried about the requirements of doing your degree in law so those type of requirements they change with the university you go to verts it's completely different from uct it's completely different from uk's at n and so on and so forth but i would obviously advise people who want to do maritime law to look at universities that has maritime subjects in their undergraduate degree you know so vet doesn't because it's an inland university okay. so you would look at your uk's at n i know that university of kwazulu natal does have electives in your final year i think where you can do maritime law so that gives you an opportunity to have uh, an introduction into the industry and perhaps maybe after that you can think about pursuing it further by doing a master's in it uh, but from a high school perspective i don't think that there's anything that you can do that will help you be more ready to be a maritime lawyer okay. yeah and then subject wise you can do any subjects just make sure that the, your aps is good enough for llb yes so you can just do any subject so you will see when you go through a lot of prospectors from different universities they will have options to say if you are doing like pure med you'd actually have to have like maybe level five and if you were doing mentalage you have to have level six okay. um so they normally look at your meds and i think english as well uh but all these other ones they don't necessarily focus in on them so it's not a requirement that you should be doing physics i didn't do physics i did commercial studies okay. so yeah um, and with English, does it have to be like home language or even first additional is fine? I was first additional. Okay. So they will also have that classification where it says home language would have to be this level and first additional will have to be that level. Okay. So they'll differ, you know, from that perspective. Yeah. <laughs> On a day to day, what do you do? Listen, um, there are various positions um, that you can venture into in the maritime industry. So I started off as a practitioner. Mm -hmm. So those are the people that are lawyers that you know you go to, you consult when you have a dispute and they they represent you in court and everything. Mm -hmm. Then there is a there is another aspect which is being an in-house legal advisor. Mm -hmm. So this is where you will be working for like a shipping company mm -hmm. or a company that is involved in the shipping industry like a logistics company um, or freight and forwarding company so you can position yourself in various you know um, um, job posts within as a lawyer still as a practitioner what I did was I had an opportunity to work quite a lot with ship owners so then that meant we represented all the interest of the ship owner so if the ship owner's vessel collides with another or a ship owner's vessel somehow causes pollution right um, we would be the people that would have to assist the ship owner with you know the litigation aspect of things where now the other ship that it collided with says no but your ship was at fault so then we need to be there and mitigate our clients loss you know um, represent them and find ways to say no it wasn't actually maybe we can apportion the damage um, you guys were also equally as involved in this incident as we are so we basically just are agents for our clients from a legal perspective um, then we'll obviously go to court if we need to go to court we appoint advocates and counsel to assist you know with arguing the case at court and so on and so forth but currently I am an in-house legal advisor for a transport and logistics company. So it basically focuses a lot on freight and forwarding and customs clearing. So we basically are the people that you speak to um, when you want goods to be transported from one location to the other. So what then happens in this instance is that you will have, um, say, um, cargo being coal that you want to move from Richards Bay to China so you will speak to the freight and forwarding people because you don't, you can't go straight and speak to a ship owner mm. we are more like the middlemen we are the people that will connect the client 
to the ship owner you know okay. to say you know we have this client and they have this quantity of goods that they need to be loaded onto your vessel then charge and everything and all of that so we will be the ones that you know focuses on that process but from a legal perspective obviously because that's more of an operational thing mm -hmm. we assist and we help the company mm -hmm. to uh, mitigate its risks from a legal perspective mm -hmm. you know we look at the contracts that they enter into um, we assess whether there are any risks in accepting the certain clauses and what these clauses mean for the company or actually for the relationship that they want to get into with this particular client mm -hmm. so we are the legal brains around the company yeah. anything legal we are there okay. yeah Oh that's very interesting. And since you are in I feel like I'm going to ask very shallow questions. Mm -hmm. Have you do you find yourself on ships a lot or how many times have you like is it a common thing that you're like on sites? Um well not as a legal advisor, right? Mm -hmm. But uh when I was in practice I did have like I I did you know um um board a ship what were the circumstances with one particular ship two crew members died on board so it was coming into south africa and the ship owner appointed us to be the people that basically conducts casualty investigations so that's also something else that you will do as a lawyer mm. right so you go on board you interview all the people who are there so you can gather the facts in terms of like what happened mm. and um so that you can be able to yeah who's for liability purposes so you could be like no listen it it it's something that was outside the ship owner's yeah. um control as a practitioner yes you will have opportunity to go on board but not regularly sometimes you will represent clients and you never even have to you don't even know how the vessel looks like you're just oh, okay. looking at the legal documents that you need to look at the facts around it what do you like the most about your job show sure, that's an interesting question there's nothing really i like about my job but there's absolutely a lot that i love about my career okay yes so i normally draw the distinction because currently right now i feel that there is a room for growth in my job um that would not necessarily be directly influenced by what i want to do um or directly influenced by my conduct right but when you're looking at it from a perspective of a career um you you decide like you are in charge you know the captain of yes, your ship yes you are the captain of your ship <laughs> so i found that from a career perspective i've created opportunities so many opportunities for growth that i don't think if i was solely focused on my job i would have had an opportunity to do so i'm very much in love with my career um which obviously extends far beyond my job so i believe that a job is something that you do in order for you to get compensated for doing it but a career is something that you can do to grow yourself you know um whether you've been compensated or not um it's yes you you get to contribute to the development of that particular industry that you're in whether they pay you or not so you grow roll yourself in many possible ways that you can mm. and not really just focusing on what is brought to your desk and say do this mm. um but currently what i like about the job that i'm doing being a legal um advisor is being able to be part of an organization and a business and assist it in being able to offer that assistance like legal assistance to say listen guys this looks like a very beautiful business venture but please be on the lookout of of you know of 1 2 3 and also whenever they because you know you enter into agreements sometimes and there are consequences legal consequences being able to help the company navigate through those type of you know experiences when now they are in a litigious battle with somebody else because they didn't pay them and everything being able to communicate and and be part of that critical decision making um even though you don't make the decision but you kind of like influence the decision of the decision makers mm -hmm. so that's very nice because it's like you are valuable valuable yes one and you directly involved in the direction of the company where the company is going yeah. from a legal perspective yeah. and that's great i think i like that yeah and what do you like least what i like least is billing now nah, that that's in practice oh, okay yeah. <laughs> girl <laughs> i think in practice when you're like an attorney right mm. 
billing is a pain, but it's 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 what matters the most. So the dynamics of being part of a law firm are completely different from being part of a business, okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Because when you are in a law firm, what happens is the value that you bring to the company. Yes, it's 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 your knowledge, your skills, your everything, mm. but like. A law firm is a business, mm. so they need to have revenue. And that's basically how they get to do that is your time. Yeah. How much time have you built? How much money have you made? Yeah. You know, so mm. it's very important for you to have a good billing system mm. in place. And yeah, that, that, that used to be one of the issues. I'm like, oh my Lord, help me. Mm. This is something else. But right now, I think one of the least things that I don't like doing with my current job mm. is reviewing supplier agreements. Okay. The company wants to purchase um, toiletries or whatever, then obviously they need to enter into an agreement. Mm. It's small, it's just like, it's not a significant contract and chances of you being ripped off or... Not even ripped off, but like chances of there being huge legal consequences are like very small, right? So it's, it's almost like, I'm not going. Oh, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, like it's, it's like, this is, it's not big enough. Like, yeah, I have to do it yeah. because it's part of my job, but like, I'm not growing oh, okay. in any way. But yeah, I think that's just one of the least things. So basically, if I were to round it off, I would say I don't like doing tasks that don't necessarily contribute to my growth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where do you see yourself in the future? Let me say five years. I'm not sure if I want to share that now. Okay, that's good, actually. You need yeah. to keep it within protect your vision yes yes but I, I see myself somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> yeah alrighty okay guys I hope you found this video useful it was very random I know I learned a lot you know what I like about what you said Ne? Yeah. how you differentiated a job to a career like I feel like that is such an important distinction to make because sometimes we focus so much on growing within a job that we forget in other ways in which we can impact our careers mm. and I like how you're saying that a lot of opportunities came to you because you but not solely focused on a specific job like you're yeah. doing other things on the side maritime what's the podcast <laughs> maritime law podcast maritime law podcast and i feel like you writing as well um you contributed to <laughs> to a textbook yeah. yeah so like there's other things you've been doing which had you just solely focused on your job or what they'll say at your work you mm. wouldn't have yeah, all these opportunities that have come absolutely. to you so yeah that's a really nice way to look at and just to add on that i think one of the other things that i've learned about drawing that distinction is that and it's, i'm basically going to go back to what i said about growth mm. right there are very limited growth opportunities um in your job because whatever growth you're going to get from your job is that of which will enable you to continue doing your job even more better, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at growth from a career perspective, mm -hmm. like it's it's growing you as a professional, mm -hmm. right? Even in aspects that you don't necessarily deal with in like everyday in your job, job. Yeah, you yeah. know, in your everyday job. Mm -hmm. So for an example, one of the other opportunities that I've gotten by pursuing my career is being invited to a summer academy in Tanzania, mm -hmm. where we'll basically be looking at a portion of an international instrument, which is the UNCLOS. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking at continental shelves. I've never I had to deal with continental shelves mm -hmm. in my job and I don't think that's something that I'll ever be in a position to deal with but from now you'll yeah, be exposed now, to it I'll be exposed I'll be exposed to it. I'll be able to speak to it. I'll be able to contribute to the development of knowledge in that particular, you know, industry or particular field sector. of sector. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like in as much as you'll be able to do your job, but you can also have an appreciation of all other, you know, aspects of the career industry that you are in. I would really challenge people to not just be focused on growing in your job, Promotions are good, promotions are great, but also find ways in which you can still make yourself relevant within your career, career. space. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you so much. Like I enjoyed this conversation. I've been wanting to do this video since 2019 or when I started the channel. So I'm glad that we got this chance to do it. I hope I you found it. Thank you so much for inviting me to your uh, channel. It's a pleasure. I hope you guys found it useful and found some gems, even if the industry does not fully relate to you. I feel like I learned and picked up some things. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. You. See you later in another video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Mwah.